Dr. Nick Erbel brings his experience from Germany 2006 to our studios each week. He's our resident 2010 specialist who knows what he's talking about. Dr. Nick, always a pleasure to have you in the studio. Right, what's caught your attention in the, in the papers uh, this past week? I see well, an interesting article about um, something that Aesop Bahad may or may not have said. Yeah, definitely yeah. the Business Day article on mm. Aesop's fables. Apparently at the press conference in Beijing, which was designed to promote the 2010 World Cup, Esop Pahat, Minister Pahat came out saying that, in his opinion, whites do not support 2010 and uh, do certainly not support Bafana Bafana. Wow. And that has obviously uh, caused quite a stir. A lot of people are very unhappy. And this article looks at the statistics by the HSRC that suggest that 95% mm -hmm. of whites actually perceive 2010 to provide legacy benefits for the country. Mm. I suppose it's a difficult uh, uh, argument because, you know, when you see uh, Kaiser Chiefs play Orlando Pirates, the number of uh, white fans that are there mm. is almost negligible. But Manchester United come to play Orlando Pirates and suddenly, you know, they're all there. So um, maybe he didn't say it in the right way, but there certainly is a question, isn't there? Well, there is a question. Mm. Um, however, you need to keep in mind that obviously football is not, doesn't have the same yeah. support base amongst whites as amongst blacks. Mm. And I think especially at the press conference the prom to promote 2010, um, we need to make sure that certain statements are rather not made. Yes, I think so, especially from senior figures such mm. as that. All right, let's chat a little bit about uh, what's in the uh, Sunday Times. And uh, that's about the SABC, which is quite a significant uh, uh, article. Well, the SABC awarded a broadcasting tender uh, for eight, 383 million to Sony for the broadcasting rights for 2010. And a BE company called Digital Horizon mm. has now taken the SABC to court, claiming the tender was flawed and that Sony was fully foreign and does not comply with BE. Well, and uh, what, what uh, reasons are they giving, uh, if any? Well, they're really giving yeah. the BE reasons, yeah. and uh, they're saying this tender should belong to a South African company rather than a foreign company. And uh, judge has now warned, if this is not sorted out soon, it could actually delay the broadcasting. So ordinary citizens might miss the World Cup on TV if they don't sort it out in time? Absolutely. There's wow. a very real possibility, so that needs urgent attention. Okay, and then uh, 2010 tickets on sale next year. Well, the <coughs> tickets are now finally coming uh, on for sale. And this article suggests that out of the 3 million tickets available, about 2 million will be allocated to local supporters, which is good news. Mm. One of the challenges, and uh, this is world over, and I think with all the other World Cups before, is the price of tickets vis-a-vis -vis locals. So it's one thing to have them available, but I guess the price also must be a question, because otherwise, you know, local fans get outpriced in the, in, the, in the game. Absolutely. In Germany, at the last World Cup, tickets started at about 100 euro. Um, for 2010, there's talk that tickets would start around 250 rand. Wow. Which will make them certainly more affordable for the average supporter. Right, right, right. And uh, so w will we be able to buy them online straight away from next year? Well, it will probably be online. Yeah. Um, the internet ticketing system for 2006 was a little flawed. And apparently <laughs> a lot of people got their hands on <laughs> tickets that they didn't yeah, really deserve. Yeah. But hopefully it will be fair. And uh, hopefully most people that will be able to, to get a ticket will get the ticket. Right, okay. Anything else to grab your attention other than these articles that uh, we, we've seen here during the past week? Well, certainly the, um, your appointments at the LOC yeah. and uh, the fact that the marketing position has now been reallocated a third time in as many years. And, uh, well, it remains to be mm. seen. That's a key position. In fact, FIFA president Zepp Blatter said if there's one area of shortcoming, it's the marketing of 2010 mm. overseas. So now they have appointed the FNB commercial manager, um, Derek Carstens, and we certainly are hopeful that he'll be mm. able to market 2010 mm. as fully as possible. But it seems to be quite a bit of a turnover of uh, uh, key personnel. Certainly, certainly. Uh, is that a sign of a bigger problem, do you think? 
Well, I mean, the question needs to be asked. There is yeah. a high staff turnover. It started with the HR manager, um, a couple of key figures, even Dennis Mumble, probably one of the most yeah. qualified uh, staff on the LOC, left last, resigned last week. Uh, that question mm. needs to be asked. And uh, one question that's really been in the news recently, security. There was that awful story of uh, a, a fan that was uh, attacked in an international rugby match that was played in, in a stadium where the semi-finals is going to be played. FIFA must have watched this and they must have reacted to this. Um, safety of fans, I know we've discussed it in other programs, but it's being highlighted here that it is quite an urgent problem. Well, absolutely. Probably the biggest problem in terms of perceptions overseas. And if there's one lesson from Germany and Beijing, is that you need to engage the communities. You cannot leave the policing to the police. They cannot certainly not comprehensively cover an entire mm. country for four weeks. All so right. we need to include the communities. We need to include, involve private security firms. Okay. And Dr. Nick, that's where we leave it for this week. Thank you so much for bringing those uh, issues to our attention. Thank you, Peter.